Good evening, everyone. My name is Ruku Raju. So today, uh, here in this section, we'll be discussing about the uh, topic regarding atmosphere science, pressure gradient, and uh, Coriolis force in detail. So <coughs> I hope the voice, audio, and uh, video is uh, clear. So can you please confirm that uh, the audio and voice, uh, the uh, video is. Uh, Clear, you can clearly visible the board and my voice is also audible enough. Could you please confirm? Okay, so uh, let's start the section then. So as we know, uh, net CSIR examination will be uh, conducting on uh, uh, June first week. So atmosphere science is one of the topic that is coming under the uh, net CSIR earth science syllabus. So in net CSIR earth science uh, syllabus, there is geology paper, geophysics topics, atmosphere science is there, then oceanography uh, portions are there, planetary science questions will be asked. So today we'll be discussing about one of the major topic coming under the atmosphere science part that is the pressure gradient and Coriolis force. So what is this pressure gradient and Coriolis force? What is the importance of understanding pressure gradient and Coriolis force? So for that we study uh, Coriolis force and pressure gradient or that uh, their impact in atmospheric science under this particular topic that is the forces that influence the wind. So whenever we define wind or whenever we uh, study about wind, we know that the forces that causes the horizontal movement of air, the direction, the, co the forces that influence the direction of motion of wind, forces that influence the, that uh, causes the movement of air molecules or what is the real influence of beginning of air molecules, those are of four types, four different forces are there. They are the first one is the pressure gradient pressure gradient force then comes the Coriolis force Coriolis force then the centripetal force and at last fourth one is about the friction friction so when it comes to these uh, different types of forces uh, that affects the uh, different types of forces that affects the or that influences the formation of wind so first thing is about the pressure gradient so when we define a uh, pressure gradient it is simply whenever we define a gradient if it is a hydraulic gradient terminology or a uh, gradient terminology means there is a difference or there is a potential difference between two different entities so here when the term pr pr pressure gradient also defines the same thing pressure gradient means from a high pressure region to a low pressure region there is the difference in pressure between this high pressure and low pressure region to the distance between these two regions this is what is defined under pressure gradient condition so over here in this particular picture i hope the picture is clear so over here this is the high pressure zone uh, isobar of 1020 millibar is mentioned over here uh, a, a pressure grade the isobar of 1016 uh, millibar is uh, drawn over here and this is the low pressure region so this is the high pressure region and this is the low pressure region so there is a difference between the pressure difference there is a horizontal pressure difference these isobars define a horizontal pressure change the horizontal pressure is changing till here it is 1020 millibar when it came over here it is 1016 millibar so there is a change in the pressure gradient happening over here so if i compute the amount of pressure change that occurs between this given distance so here the distance is 100 kilometers between this 100 kilometers the pressure difference 1020 minus 1016 matlab 4 millibar so the, if i compute the amount of pressure change that occurs between this 100 kilometer distance i can calculate the pressure gradient so pressure gradient means difference in pressure 
difference difference in pressure divided by distance between the two points distance between the two points this will give you the pressure gradient pressure gradient so pressure gradient is equal to difference in pressure divided by distance between the points this is what is called as pressure gradient terminology so change in pressure over a particular distance over a uh, uh, small distance if there is pressure change in pressure happens that means there is a strong pressure gradient between that particular that two points if location a and location b the distance between these two location is only for example 10 kilometers so in between these 10 kilometers there is a pressure gradient variation of 10 millibar and then there is another situation that there is uh, two different points so for example it is 50 kilometer distance and the pressure gradient between these two, uh, the pressure difference between these two points are 10 millibar. So, in the first case, pressure gradient will be difference between the two points is, pressure difference between two points is 10 millibar di divided by 10 kilometers. Here it is 10 millibar is the difference between the pressure at between two points A and B and the distance between two points is 10 kilometers, 50 kilometers. So, you can see that here the pressure gradient, this difference between pressure divided by distance will give you the pressure gradient. So, here pressure gradient will be 1, here pressure gradient is 1 by 5. That means if the distance between two points is small, relatively smaller than a, uh, the, when change in pressure is happening between a small distance, that means there is a strong pressure gradient or we call it as steep pressure gradient if the pressure bit uh, this difference between pressure gradient is uh, happening at a huge distance there is a huge distance uh, between two different points so, and difference in pressure would be very small over a relatively large distance so in that particular case where the change in pressure happens uh, between a relatively larger longer distance or the isobars are long enough here I can draw isobar at this particular condition may go in this here here the isobar will be over here this can be 1000 millibar isobar this is 1010 millibar isobar here the isobar is at a distance of 50 kilometers that means more narrower the isobars or more closer the isobars are that much steeper or stronger will be the pressure gradient or wider the isobars that much weak or gentle will be the pressure gradient. So, I hope you understood the terminology pressure what does a pressure term defines uh, pressure gradient terminology defines how can we calculate the pressure gradient and if the isobars are closely spaced what does the pressure gradient imply uh, if the isobars are spread apart how pressure gradient can be defined. Now, the next thing that we have we can explain is about the pressure gradient force. So, in the same picture over here, in between these two uh, cases where the pressure isobar of 1020 millibar is over here, isobar of, isobar of 1016 millibar is uh, present over here. So, there is a pressure gradient, pressure gradient is almost 4 millibar divided by 100 kilometer is the pressure gradient. So, because of this variation in the pressure, because of the change in the pressure in either of these uh, uh, isobars from high pressure, this is a high pressure zone and this is a low pressure zone. So, there is a net change in the pressure happening because of this particular situation, because of this horizontal pressure variation, difference in the horizontal pressure, there is a net force acting and that net force is acting in this particular direction from high pressure to low pressure there is a net force acting 
and this net force acting is called as pressure gradient force. Pressure gradient force, pressure gradient force or PGF, pressure gradient force. It is very easy, whenever there is a change in the, uh, there is a horizontal change in pressure exists, there is a net force on the air and that force we call as pressure gradient force. Now, in from the picture it is clear that the direction of pressure gradient force is from high pressure area towards the low pressure area. So, always the direction of pressure gradient force will be from high pressure zone to low pressure zone, the direction of movement will takes place. Next thing that you have to keep in mind is the magnitude of pressure gradient force. Magnitude of pressure gradient force depends upon the uh, pressure gradient itself. How strong is the pressure gradient between two different points? If it is a steep pressure gradient or a weaker pressure gradient. If it is a weaker pressure gradient, the uh, pressure gradient force will also be weaker. If it is a stronger pressure gradient, then the pressure gradient difference between pressure gradient force between this point and this point will be greater. So, pressure gradient force, uh, pressure gradient force dependent upon or the magnitude of pressure gradient force depends upon the uh, pressure gradient itself. Uh, steeper the pressure gradient uh, will define a strong pressure gradient force, weaker the pressure gradient defines a uh, weak uh, pressure gradient force. Now, the next thing that you have to keep in mind is, so uh, here there is a net force from high pressure to low pressure. What is happening when there is a net force from high pressure to low pressure? That means there is wind, air molecules are shifting from high pressure.
sorry for the uh, disturbance in between the audio was uh, cut so let's continue so we are discussing about the pressure gradient force so as i have explained pressure gradient force is the force that causes the wind to blow so uh, closely spaced isobar on a weather chart indicate that steep pressure gradient is happening over there there is a strong net force present in between high pressure and low pressure area or what is this net force between high pressure and low pressure area that is the pressure gradient force so there is a strong net force so there is a strong pressure gradient between uh, pressure gradient force exists between these i two either places or the area shown in the weather chart and hence there should be high winds so isobars closely spaced on a weather chart defines a strong wind condition if the isobars are spread across it if the space between the isobars are wide that means that the wind over that particular area is very weak uh, light wind will be there uh, pressure gradient forces will also be weak pressure gradient itself is weak if the isobars are widely spaced so isobars uh, the space between isobars can indicate pressure gradient force present at a particular location from a weather chart you can define whether a particular area has uh, wind with stronger winds will be blowing over there or the wind will be lighter light will be, wind will be blowing over there so this uh, this is how we interpret from weather charts by looking at the isobars whether they are closely spaced or widely spaced based on that we can easily define the pressure gradient we can easily define the uh, wind happening over there we can explain whether it is a strong wind blowing over there or a calm uh, light wind blowing over there now pressure gradient force uh, it's only for a force acting upon air so it always uh, blowing from uh, if we only if pressure gradient force is the only force that acting upon air then always the air should move from high pressure area to low pressure area right there should not be always move in a straight line from high pressure area to low pressure area in this particular way if this is the isobar shown in the picture if 1020 millibar isobar is over here then 1016 millibar isobar is over here and if there is no other if there is no other force acting on the air molecules and hence there is a pressure gradient difference from this point to this point then the wind should be moving in this particular way in a straight line but if you look at weather charts we will get to see that wind is not exactly moving in a straight line it uh, there it is de being deflected but the moment it start forming the moment there is a pressure difference exists uh, if the, the moment pressure difference forms a low pressure high pressure area there is pressure gradient force developing the moment pressure gradient force develop that means there is a net change in the net force acting from high pressure to low pressure that is the pressure gradient force existing and if there is pressure gradient force wind will be moving from high pressure to low pressure area and if there is no other force acting over the wind wind will move in the straight line but the moment the wind start forming there is a force acting over the wind making it to deflect from its path and that force is called as coriolis force so let's see what is coriolis force in detail uh, what is how it is affecting the wind movement when we define coriolis force it describes as an apparent force so it is due to the rotation of earth an apparent force due to the rotation of earth is what is called as coriolis force so coriolis force uh, whenever actually when we look from the earth surface because of the earth rotation the objects which are freely moving for example the ocean currents or an aircraft all these objects that are freely moving we feel like they are having a projectile motion they have a uh, they are not a projectile motion sorry they have a curved motion or they are taking a curved path even though they are moving a straight line because we are rotating on the, with, along with the earth we are moving so the things that are moving straight will feel like we when we look up to the uh, uh, air the aircraft which is moving actually in a straight line will feel like it is taking a 
curved path. So what is happening? What the Coriolis force is an apparent force due to the rotation of earth and it is also called as Coriolis effect because a Coriolis force will never increase the velocity of a moving body. Depending upon the velocity, if it is uh, moving at a larger pace, the velocity is higher, the effect of Coriolis force will be higher. Or moving, if an object is moving very slowly, the effect of Coriolis force will be comparatively lower. So, but the exact opposite thing will not happen. Coriolis force cannot increase the acceleration or cannot cause an initiation of movement or cannot increase the velocity of a moving object. It can only change the direction or deflect it, deflect its path. That is why we also call Coriolis force as Coriolis effect. So, Coriolis force is a name, the, uh, we have given the name of Gaspard Coriolis, a French scientist who worked upon this particular term mathematically. So, we have used, uh, we have given his name upon to this particular phenomena. So, it is an apparent force due to the rotation of earth and we call that as Coriolis effect. Now, when it comes to any type of free, movi free uh, moving object, for example, as I said, air molecules, or an ocean current, an aircraft, anything will be deflected from its uh, from the straight line path to, uh, uh, because of the rotation of earth. And Coriolis course also it deflects the wind uh, if it is in the northern hemisphere, even if it is. So this is the equatorial ge geographical equator. And in the northern hemisphere, any an air, pool, air molecule moving in this particular direction towards the poles, it will be deflected towards it right. If, it, if an air parcel is moving, uh, an aircraft, whatever it is, it is moving from polar region towards equatorial side, it will be deflected towards it right. Whereas in the southern hemisphere, an object moving in this part towards the pole, it will be deflected towards it left. If it is moving in this particular direction, it will be deflected towards its left. So, Coriolis force is what actually causes formation of the, uh, the actual path of uh, oceanic currents, surface ocean currents. Why, why do they have uh, curvatures? That's because of Coriolis force. Why do the uh, trade winds, the, uh, north, so the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere trade winds, they have curved direction curved movement that is because of the Coriolis force. So, Coriolis force causes the wind to deflect to its right from its indented path in the northern hemisphere. Same in the southern hemisphere, Coriolis force will cause the wind to deflect from its indented path. It will take a left turn in the southern hemisphere. This is very important. Coriolis force causes the wind or any object free moving object to take to deflect from its indented path towards the right in the northern hemisphere and Coriolis force will cause any free moving object on the earth to deflect to the left in the southern hemisphere. So, so keep this in mind which is very important. Now if wind speed is higher that will increase the deflection that will increase the uh, effect of the Coriolis force. Stronger the wind, greater the deflection from the intended path, deflection will be higher. Uh, weaker the wind, lighter will be the deflection. So, if the wind speed uh, uh, value is of, uh, it, it, if does not have much value, wind speed is very weak, then the deflection will not be much. So, depending upon the deflection and depending upon the distance, Coriolis force depends upon the distance from which if it is moving only from 10 degree latitude to uh, 20 degree latitude there is a small only a small dif uh, distance traveling or if a movement is from 20 degree latitude to 60 degree latitude the movement happening that means a huge distance the object is traveling. So, more the distance they travel more will be uh, more effect will be to the deflection smaller the distance the objects travel lighter will be the deflection. Now, Coriolis force uh, increases of all wind speed from a value of 0 at the equator to a maximum at the uh, poles. Coriolis force is actually 0 at the equator and it is maximum at the poles. 
this is also another important terminology uh, like definition or another point about the Coriolis force. Its effect is zero above the equator and its effect is maxima above the poles. So what we have just explained to an observer, observer uh, standing on the earth, the object, the object moving in any direction, whether it is moving towards north, yeah, south, northeast, southeast, in any direction, if it is in the northern hemisphere, it will deflect to its to the right from its intended path. If it is in the southern hemisphere, it will deflect to its left from its intended path. So, the amount of de deflection of Coriolis force depends upon rotation of earth. It depends upon the latitude. So, as I said in equatorial region, it is lesser. So, the, from equatorial region towards the pole, the Coriolis effect is keep on increasing. So, it depends upon the latitude, depends upon the object's speed. It depends upon the object's speed also. So, Coriolis force uh, acts at right angles to the wind. Only influencing wind direction, it will not change the wind's speed. It will never increase the wind speed or yeah, decrease the wind speed. It will never uh, change the or influence the wind speed. It will only influence the direction of the wind. So, uh, as, uh, if we brief out the things that we just discussed, pressure gradient force is always directed from higher pressure uh, towards the lower pressure. And pressure gradient force causes the air molecules to move. Air particles move because of the pressure gradient force. Steeper the pressure gradient, uh, tighter the isobars will be, and uh, more forcefully the wind, more stronger will be the uh, wind. Uh, wider the uh, isobars, more weaker will be the pressure gradient force, more lighter will be the wind once the wind start to blow once the air pole air molecules start to move uh, it will be affected by the coriolis force and it will cause the air molecules or the wind to bend to the right if it is in the northern hemisphere to the left it will bend to the left if it is in the southern hemisphere uh, then it, the effect of coriolis force is zero at the equator it is maximum at the poles so these are the things that we have defined and so according to this particular picture if there is a pressure grade because of pressure gradient uh, variation pressure gradient force wind will be moving in this particular way from high pressure to low pressure by cutting the isobars wind should move then comes the coriolis force but if you check any weather charts you will get to see that the movement of wind is actually kind of almost parallel to not exactly parallel almost parallel to isobars it is not exact right angle to the isobar it is almost parallel to the isobars so how is it how is this possible how can uh, if there is pressure gradient force variation from this to this and then coriolis force is also there how can this to be happen that is what is called as a geostrophic wind so, geostrophic wind is actually a very important topic uh, when uh, under CSAR net examination syllabus. So, here the horizontal pressure gradient variation. So, this is actually you can see the picture. I guess the picture is clear. So, look at the position 1. This is location 1 or position 1. So, uh, whenever we define, so this picture over here, this is only, this defines wind aloft. At an upper air level chart, wind defines the wind aloft on an upper air chart. So, if when it is an upper air chart, it is away from the influence of friction, surface friction. It is away from the friction uh, processes. We are not defining the friction over here. There is So, if it is el wind aloft, it is only affected by pressure gradient force and Coriolis force. There is no influence of Earth's frictional force. There is no frictional force present. So, when the wind is aloft <coughs> uh, in the upper level chart, wind blow more or less parallel to the, uh, the isobar. So, this is the isobar of 900 millibar. This is the isobar of uh, 904 millibar. This is the isobar of 908 millibar. So, actually wind moves. In this particular direction, this is the direction of 
विंड actually wind will move in this particular direction so how is this possible why this particular movement happen so this is what we explain in the geostrophic wind and this kind of wind movement parallel to the isobar is called as geostrophic wind geostrophic wind means when the wind move parallel to when the air molecules move parallel to the isobars we call it as a geostrophic wind so how it this is possible so i will have a detailed discussion of geostrophic wind formation in the uh, class itself so here uh, i'll simply explain in a in a few words what how geos, what is geostrophic wind so over here at the location a the moment this is high pressure zone this is low pressure zone so from high pressure to low pressure there is pressure gradient force generating what happens when pressure gradient force generate wind starts to move at this particular point wind start moving air air molecules will start to move so that's how the movement is happening pressure gradient force is notated at this particular point this is the pressure gradient force uh, direction from high pressure to low pressure pressure gradient force the moment wind start to move there is coriolis force pulling them towards its right right side only if it is in the northern hemisphere so this is picture for northern hemisphere so this is the coriolis force acting towards its right, right hand side then so pressure gradient is pulling it into one side coriolis force is pulling it into the other side so there is an uh, imbalance between pressure gradient and coriolis force is acting so the molecules will try to sustain try to maintain the balance between pressure gradient and wind uh, coriolis force by the end the air molecules will be tilting and tilting you can see that coriolis force is changing pressure gradient is tilting at, at last at a particular point coriolis force will be same as the pressure gradient force there is zero net change in the force acting upon the particles pressure gradient force will be equal to the coriolis force hence from this particular point to here from location 1 to location 5 we can see that this arrow is keep on increasing that means this defines the direction and the magnitude so because of variation in coriolis force and pressure gradient force there is a net change in the force present over there and because of that net change in force the wind will keep on speeding up so at, from the moment the pressure gradient force is equal to coriolis force wind will start moving parallel to the uh, isobar and its velocity will now will not change it will stay constant so so pressure speed of geostrophic wind is directly related to its pressure gradient and geostrophic wind blows in northern hemisphere with low pressure to its left and high pressure to its right so much more detailed part of this geostrophic wind there is more explanations are required more uh, terminologies should be there related to the geostrophic wind then after that we'll explain the cyclonic movement and anti cyclonic movement if wind is not exactly moving in the straight line wind actually takes a curved uh, movement around the low and high pr pressure zones aloft so all these things will be explained in the uh, continuation of this particular topic so if you why if you guys want to attend a demo class if you guys want any details about our coaching institute kp gate classes where we are conducting uh, a currently we are conducting a crash course regard, uh, for the net csir paper there is offline online classes for gate examination gsi paper uh, for csir net examination for jam there is uh, uh, ex the classes are going on offline and online classes are going on and if you want study material or any details if you want to see a demo class you can look at the de description box uh, numbers are provided over there online form is provided if you want to attend a demo class you can fill the form we'll call you out we'll contact you and we'll schedule a demo class so that you can attend our section and you can understand how we are teaching and this particular section of live section will be continued till the net examination 
from different different topics from atmosphere science from oceanography from geomorphology from different different topics will be explaining the most important topic related to the next examination there will be live sections uh, conducting in almost every day uh, one after a day there will be live sections for net csir paper so please look at the description box fill the forms and find out the details uh, contact us for any uh, information so i hope you understood what we have discussed over here for the pressure gradient and uh, what is a coriolis force and how it affects and how ultimately it brings out a geostrophic wind so you can follow us in our facebook youtube and instagram channel you can subscribe our youtube channel so that you will get more videos of our live sections you will get more notifications about live sections and other videos that we upload there have been videos about net csir paper they will will be uploading more videos regarding the net csir section so you can go through our pages for more information you can uh, comment if you require any suggestions if you have any uh, portions to be explained you can comment it over here we will try to explain those uh, sections in the live videos so thank you so much i am rukuraju let's meet in the next live section